Hey guys, this looks like a fun one. It says solve for x. We're given x squared minus 6x plus 10 to the power of x squared minus 8x plus 16 is equal to 1. This is day 17 of our Algebraary February calendar. For the month of February, we're going to solve 28 Algebraary problems. It looks like there's some pretty cool ones on here. And if you want to try this one, pause it right now because I'm going to solve it in 3, 2, 1. So there are three scenarios where we can do something to a power to get 1. For the first case, if we have a base of 1, our exponent isn't going to matter, we're still going to have 1. For the second case, our base isn't going to matter, as long as our exponent is 0, we'll be equal to 1. And for the third scenario, if our base is negative 1 and our exponent is a positive or negative even number, that will equal 1. So let's look at all three scenarios. In the first scenario, we need our base to equal 1, so this has to equal 1. In our second scenario, we need the exponent to equal 0 or this is equal to zero. And for the third scenario, we need the base to equal negative one, that's this right here, and we need this exponent to be even. Let's focus on the first scenario first. Let's set the whole thing equal to zero. Let's subtract one from both sides. We end up with x squared minus six x plus nine is equal to zero. And then we can factor this trinomial. To get this x squared, we're gonna have an x and an x, and then for the rest of it, we need two numbers that add to negative six and multiply to positive nine. Well, that'll be negative three and negative three. So x minus three times x minus three is equal to this right here. And since we're multiplying it by itself, this is the same thing as x minus three squared. And the only way this is gonna be equal to zero is if x minus three is equal to zero. Let's add three to both sides and we get x is equal to three. This is the answer for scenario one. Let's check out scenario two. From here, this trinomial is already equal to zero, so let's factor it. Once again, to get x squared, we're gonna have x and x. And then for the rest of it, we need two numbers that add to negative eight and multiply to 16. That's gonna be negative four and negative four. And then the quantity x minus four times the quantity x minus four is the same thing as the quantity x minus four squared. And the only way this is gonna be equal to zero is if x minus four is equal to zero. We can add four to both sides and we get x is equal to four. This is our solution to the second scenario. Now let's figure out this third scenario. First, let's find out where the base is negative one. We can add one to both sides and we get x squared minus six x plus 11 equals zero. And then if we try to factor this trinomial, we can definitely get the x squared with an x and x, but there's nothing that's gonna add to negative six and multiply to 11. So we're gonna have to do a quadratic formula. A is equal to one, B is equal to negative six, and C is equal to positive 11. So in the place of this A, we'll plug in one, and this A will plug in one. And then for the B, negative negative six is positive six. And then we'll plug in a negative six for this B. And last, for the C, we'll plug in 11. Now let's clean up under the square root. The quantity negative six squared is positive 36, and then we're gonna subtract four times one times 11, which is 44. And in the denominator, two times one is equal to two. Let's go back to the square root. 36 minus 44 is negative eight. And then the negative eight can be rewritten as negative one times eight. And the eight can be rewritten as four times two. And now the three things being multiplied under the square root can each have their own square root. Square root of negative one is the imaginary number i, and square root of four is equal to two. So we end up with six plus or minus two i root two over two. Let's split this real portion and the imaginary portion into two separate fractions. And six divided by two is equal to three, and these twos can cancel each other out. So our final answer is x equals three plus or minus i root two. So this value of x will give us a base of negative one. Now we gotta see if this value of x will give us an exponent that's even. So first, this means two different numbers. There's the plus version and there's the minus version. Let's check each of these. So we're checking if we plug this in, will this give us an even value? So for the first one in the place of these x's, let's plug in three plus i root two. And for the bottom one in the place of these x's, we'll plug in three minus i root two. This simplified is negative one minus two i root two. And this one simplified is negative one plus two i root two. Neither one of these are an even number, so these two solutions won't work. I'm a little disappointed. I think it would have been a cooler problem if these would have worked. So now we're left with x equals three and x equals four. Let's check them real quick. For x equals three, let's plug in three for all the x's. And then for x equals four, let's plug in four for all the x's. This ends up giving us one to the one, which does equal one, so it checks out. And this ends up giving us two to the zero, which does equal one, so it checks out. 
So the answer to our question is x equals 3 or x equals 4. This looks important. Let's put a box around it. And here's the next one. It says solve for x. We're given 2 to the x plus 4 to the x equals 8 to the x. This is going to be a fun one. I'm pretty sure there's no whole number solution for this. How exciting. Hey guys, I did one other thing. I made another problem like this one that I think works for all three scenarios. This one should have three answers and they should be a lot easier to get.